bring the public hearing to order July 7, 2015, 9.30 a.m. Could I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Tedesco. Here. Commissioner Odoricio. Here. Commissioner Henry. Commissioner Hansen. Here. Commissioner Pulaski. Here. Could everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? No awards or presentations today. Public comment. Do we have anyone signed up for public comment? Uh, Commissioner Tedesco, uh, approval of the agenda. Oh, did I did I pass that up? To approve. Second. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Pulaski. Yes. Commissioner Odoricio. Yes. Commissioner Tedesco. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> public comment. Do we have anyone signed up for public comment? We do have three people signed up for public comment, two regarding marijuana establishments and one um, regarding the pipeline for the land use case. Okay. We will have an opportunity for public comment during the pipeline case if you want to hold that comment until then. Uh, <laughs> if I could have the two that would like to make the comments not regarding our land use case. If you could step forward one at a time and please state your name and address for the record. Good morning, County Commissioners. Don Claps, 3400 East 156th Avenue, Brighton, Colorado. Um, I own a piece of property, industrial property, uh, down on 61st in Washington. I'm very excited that we have uh, uh, marijuana establishment possibility for this particular industrial zoning. I've had a couple of the uh, lottery winners come to me, approach me to see if we might be able to build a building on this property, which would clearly be its highest and best use. Um, we are moving forward with our plans and our soil tests and such, getting ready to uh, build this building. Um, however, my the lottery winner that is here also to speak kind of uh, got our backs up against the wall for timing. Um, July 30th was the deadline to have our plans uh, approved and our building permit drawn. It doesn't look like we're going to make that time. So we had a couple of questions, but uh, I suppose my final question, or my only question, is what do you think about January 2016 as far as additional licenses? I know that you guys did a vote that said let's keep it at 10 for now. Uh, do you, have you had any discussions or thoughts concerning what you might do for uh, additional licenses in uh, 2016? Commissioner Odoricio. Just last, I think it was just last week, we voted to keep the cap at 10. Correct. So um, that's, and, the, that's the answer to your question. Okay, and so that it'll uh, maintain at the 10 for now. Um, um, so I, I guess I don't have any other questions. Um, if there will be any additional study sessions as we approach the uh, uh, 2016 mark, um, is it uh, likely that there might be additional discussions concerning the maximum license number? Uh, sir, this is public comment. And, sure, sure. you know, we're, we are being very gracious in answering the questions, but it is public comment. Uh, what I would suggest to you is we have had public uh, or study sessions on the marijuana issue. Those are available. I'm sure that we can have staff work with you to get the uh, information that was given out during those study sessions. I absolutely want to answer your questions. I do want to just keep to our criteria of this is public comment. If you have further questions for us, I'm sure any one of the commissioners would love to sit down with you and talk to you about the subject. Uh, as Commissioner Rodericio had stated, the cap was addressed. It was maintained at 10. Um, we have the protocol and the policies in place as far as how this takes place. There were deadlines that were needed to be met. Everybody was aware of those deadlines when they uh, received the award. And we were very clear at everything that needed to happen in the timeline that needed to happen. Uh, we have not had any discussion at this point of extending those timelines for any reason as, as of yet. So okay. I would suggest to you that you would talk to our staff and any other questions. And if you'd like to sit down with any one of us, please do so. Fantastic. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, sir. 
Again, please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Tom Gray. I live at 1547 Emerson Street, Denver, Colorado, 80218. I was selected as a lottery winner in January for the infused products manufacturing. I began diligently looking for any piece of property that matched your zoning. Um, <clears throat> it was very hard. I found a place that uh, I was told by Michael Weaver that was perfect, admit, it met all of the zoning setbacks. But then when we came to the, uh, the plan review, uh, Abel mentioned that it, it did not meet it because of the, the way it was zoned versus the square footage. So we were very disappointed. Um, then we recontacted this gentleman that just spoke. Uh, we signed a lease agreement with him. We were told that that property was perfect. We are sort of uh, having some delays getting funding. We've spent thousands of dollars with the state already for licensing. We are currently fully um, applied with the state. We're waiting to hear back. And I'm just wondering if there's any possibility that since we've made all these steps and taken all this time for the last six months to invest all this money and time, is there any way you would consider some leniency in the deadline so that the company we've basically created can have a chance to uh, do something? I'm going to ask the county manager if you have any suggestions as how do we we could proceed from here i know that we were very clear in how we proceeded with this with the lottery winners and by the way congratulations Thank on winning the lottery much. and it seems uh, like such an excellent opportunity to build something here to generate revenue for the county and and i do understand your dilemma i just want to make sure that we're not you know doing something that goes against what the policies that we've already put in place yes I would ask the county manager if there's a procedure or a process that he might be able to follow to request that extension. You know, if the if the commissioners uh, so choose, I would uh, bring forward what those policies were, and we can have a conversation about whether the commissioner would like to make any changes to that. But at this point, um, there hasn't been any discussion about uh, making any extensions to the existing six month time frame. Um, if you so choose, though, uh, staff can bring that forward for our discussion next week if we'd like. Oh, we can definitely, if that's okay with the rest of the commissioners, we can definitely have that discussion. I will, I will say this, that, you know, making um, special arrangement for certain individuals kind of puts off the other people who have met the timelines. Yes, I understand. And personally, from my point of view, although I would like to look at it, I don't believe that I would be in support of extending those timelines because we were very clear to everybody yes. that that was the timelines that needed to be met and this is the route. I, yes, and I might add that it, it could be if needed, you would apply it to all, all 10 winners. And, and I understand that, but we've had the other winners have, you know, as far as I know, met the timelines and For the are pursuing. Products, I, I do not know about the individual winners or in sure. the categories, but again, that would be something that we would need to look at. Okay. So, yes, sir. So, Commissioner Hansen. Um, as far as whether or not I'd want to look at it, the answer is no, and I wouldn't be inclined to extend it either. Sorry, what was that? The question was, are the commissioners, your question was, are the commissioners inclined to look at a change in policy? And, and okay, I, so I'm saying I wouldn't. Okay. Um, you heard Commissioner right, Tedesco I... say he would be interested in looking at it, but he's not inclined to change it. And so I don't know how the other commissioners feel, but if we're going to give direction to the county manager as far as what we're going to do, I think people need to say what their view is. Okay. Commissioner Odorizio. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would recommend that you get together with staff, see where you are, and just like any other application for any other land use or business that comes in front of uh, the county, work with staff, and if they think that there's something to escalate to us, they can do that at that time, uh, and then we could determine probably with more information whether or not we think this is something for us to address either on an individual basis or policy sure. at this time, I think if you could just work with staff, that's my recommendation. Okay. And we, we have spoken to the staff here. They've been great, nothing but helpful. Um, however, there's, there's no way that they've said we can extend our, our timeline. If we don't have our building permit by the 31st, then, you know, 4 p.m., we're done. So, I mean, it was a risk, but that's essentially what the staff here has told us. So if you guys are aligned with that, then, you know, that's why I'm here today is to try to plead my case, essentially. Well, Commissioner Pulaski. The sad thing is I voted no on marijuana every time it's come up, so I'm probably there too, and I hate yeah. to say that as a business person, but um, the regulations that we've had in place, and you've met with some unfortunate circumstances. I'm for medical marijuana, but not for recreational, so. Well, that's the only thing we can do currently, so I'm for medical as well. <clears throat> 
All right. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Okay. It sounds like uh, that's it. Work, work with staff. Let's. You're not done yet, so work with staff. <laughs> we okay? do have uh, three weeks, right? All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks sir. for your time. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to make public comment at this time that did not sign up? Yes, ma'am. Could you please step forward and state your name and address for the record? And can I ask if this is about the land use case later? We will have, okay, thank you. Greetings, sorry, I did not uh, sign up. Uh, um, Feynman Maynard, 10950 East, 151st place, Brighton, Colorado, 80602. I live in Todd Creek, and I'm very concerned about the uh, marijuana grows in my neighborhood. I have over four, and they keep creeping up. They are using their outbuildings as commercial grows. There's no, no one will help me enforce. Um, they're, they're able to uh, set up these grows without any type of permits, without any type of inspections. They're growing in their basement. They're growing in these, uh, like I said, outbuilding garages for commercial use. And I've contacted pretty much everyone that I can, and no one can help me. I have people coming in trimming, and my neighborhood is turning into a drug zone. <laughs> and I need help. So that's why I'm here. Ma'am, I, I understand. And I, I, I absolutely feel for what's happening. And it's happening across across the state of Colorado in neighborhoods just like yours. Um, we need to come to a some type of resolution on these grow operations and how that they're, um, you know, permitted, how they're, you know, put together, what the electrical draw is. I mean, there's a whole lot of issues that we need to uh, address as a state. Um, unfortunately, sometimes with some of this is the certain grows are permitted under certain aspects and we don't have control over those but the legislature this year is trying to address those as far as you know the permitting laws and how how the many grows these people can have um, i i just wanted to say that i recognize your issue and i recognize the strain that it's putting on you i would say work with law enforcement i've tried and this is the only thing because it's not zoned for this it's a residential Mm -hmm. And I don't even know that they're licensed caregivers. I think that they're just growing because they can. They pretty much go and talk about how much they make. Yes. And right. that's a problem because. Right. I think Commissioner Hanson would like our county attorney, Heidi, to comment. Um, certainly if it's a violation of our zoning regulations, if they're doing something that's not allowed in the land use, the planning department and our um, neighborhood services director, um, Norman Wright is here. I think that they might be able to help you in terms of what we can do if it's a zoning violation that we have authority over. Um, the difficulty is us being able to go into buildings, but if it's on, if it's in a place we can see, we certainly can try and enforce that. Otherwise, um, law enforcement, unfortunately, is, is the option um, in terms of they're really the only ones who can enforce whether it's allowed because they are a care provider or, or not, we're gonna have to rely on law enforcement to make that determination. Um, and so in, an, in the unincorporated areas, that would be the sheriff's office. And, and I would definitely say that I would contact my legislator and find out what the actual procedure going forward, what they plan on doing is, and see what kind of input you can put into that, okay? okay. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Odorisi. If you'd leave your contact information with the county attorney and county manager, I'd like to talk to you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Commissioner Hanson. You, you, you said you contacted law enforcement. Have you been contacted with the sheriff's office? Is that what you, who, you've, who you've talked to? Uh, the DA of Adams County. Okay. Yeah, because that's, that's, I mean, they're part of law enforcement, but the district attorney uh, wouldn't investigate something like that. It would be the, the Adams County Sheriff's Office, okay. uh, Sheriff Mike McIntosh in his office, okay. uh, that would actually do that to determine whether or not there was a criminal violation. Okay. You know, there's, there's what, 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 what has been kind of alluded to up here a little bit is, is that there's a little bit of a loophole in the, in the law um, that allows people, if they're a caregiver, as you may already know, to have a certain number of plants. Right. Um, 
it's hard to determine, I think, from a law enforcement standpoint, whether or not that's actually true that they're a caregiver or whether or not they, they aren't a caregiver. Aren't they supposed to register with the state now? Isn't that I, I don't know the new? answer to that question because okay. I'm not that familiar with the, the regs specifically. Um, I, I see the gentleman in the back shaking his head. He seems like he would be someone that would know. Um, um, and, and so, and so I think that, but I, but I do think that you need to talk to the sheriff's office. I really do, because if they are not a registered caregiver and they're doing some things that are illegal, then law enforcement can actually get involved in that particular case. Okay. Um, and uh, so I, that, that would be, you know, our suggestion. So our zoning people, see if there's a code enforcement violation of some kind, um, because as you heard earlier, the, the, there's a limit uh, and it's actually very small. There's only only three licenses for growing in, in Adams County. Um, and so if they're, they're beyond that, then, and they, they're not one of those people, then there might be a zoning violation associated with that too. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure who the, she's supposed to talk to exactly, but I, I would think those are the two things that you could do for sure. Okay. Again, I'd like to talk to you later. I think that... Yeah. There's a few other there's there's a few other avenues that exist that I think that we need to address and okay. and I would like to offer that if you'd like to talk to any of the commissioners sure. that I'm sure that any of them would be willing to talk to you on this so you you can contact all or one or whatever you decide <laughs> okay. okay appreciate it thank very you good. very thank much you. for your time I'll ask again is there anyone else in the audience that would like to make public comment at this time that has not signed up to make public comment. Seeing none, elected officials, do we have comments? Commissioner Pulowski. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, it's a special request. Uh, I'm a, a sports and baseball fan, and any of you out there who uh, can uh, try to get uh, Troy Tulowitzki, Tulowitzki into the uh, All-Star Game, I would appreciate you doing that today. Get online, do whatever you need to, Facebook, Twitter. We need to get him there. He deserves it. He's leading the... <coughs> both leagues with uh, consecutive hits and we need to make sure he's part of our great state of Colorado and representation. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Pulaski. <laughs> Commissioners, any other comments? I'd like to make a couple comments. One is that I want to say congratulations to Team USA, the women's soccer group, for going out there and representing the USA extremely well. Uh, I just wish that the USA could uh, pay the women or, or reward the women with the amount of pay as a men's soccer soccer team and and that's something that we really need to work on we need to make sure that you know our women our sports doesn't matter men or women are treated equally they represent us as a whole as a country and we're very proud of them so thank you very much team usa the other one issue that i'd like to say is fourth of july weekend we had the fireworks show first for adams county in quite some time out at the regional fair, I believe we had a little over 6,000 estimated show up for the event. I was there all day. I will tell you that people showed up at 2 a.m. to start reserving their spots in the park. It was absolutely ridiculous. There was, there was many, many, many people there, and it was a fantastic turnout. It was a great concert. It was just a great event altogether, and I can't wait until next year. I want to thank staff and all the workers and parks and just everything that they did to make that event come off so well. And so thank you very much to all those that worked on it. It was a great event and happy 4th of July. I hope everybody enjoyed their 4th of July weekend. That being said, any other elected official comments? Seeing none, consent calendar. Do I have a motion for consent calendar? Mr. Chairman, I'd move for approval. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Thank Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. New business, County Manager Todd Leopold. Yes, good morning, Commissioners. Three items for your consideration. The first one is a resolution approving Amendment 1 to the contract between Adams County and Choco Oil for fuel services for fleet operations. Jen Tierney with our purchasing department's here to talk through that. Good morning. Purchasing conducted a formal solicitation process in 2014 for county fuel services. This service was awarded to Shoco Oil Company. The agreement allows for two additional one-year renewal options. This would be the first of the two renewals. Shoco Oil Company proposed a rack plus price of, point of four, 
4.5 cents per gallon for dispensed locations and a rack price of 6 cents per gallon for delivered fuel. Fuel Fleet Services is pleased with their current service and recommends renewing the agreement with Shoco Oil Company. The recommendation is to approve the renewal of the agreement with Shoco Oil Company in the amount of REC plus 4.5 cents per gallon for dispensed locations and REC plus 6 cents for, per gallon for delivered fuel for an approximate yearly spend of $1,750,000. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have questions for staff? No questions. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment at this time? Seeing none, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd move for approval of a resolution of Amendment 1 to the contract between Adams County and Shoco Oil Company for fuel services for fleet operations for an approximate award of $1,750,000. Do we have a second? Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? <clears throat> Aye. Commissioner Odoricio? Aye. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next item is a resolution approving Amendment 1 to the contract between Adams County and Senior Resource Center for Community Transport Program A lift services for community and neighborhood resources. Again, Jen's here to talk through that. Uh, the ALF program offers transportation services to Adams County residents who are disabled regardless of their age or who are over 60 years of age and older. <clears throat> Excuse me. Transportation services include trips for medical appointments, dental appointments, groceries, food bank sites, <clears throat> congregate meal sites, adult day and respite services, and personal trips. Purchasing conducted a formal request for proposal process in 2014 for this service, and it was awarded to Senior Resource Center. SRC was the only responder to the RFP, and the agreement allows for two additional one-year renewal options. This would be the first of the two renewals. Senior Resource Center originally proposed $22 per rider for the services. The county's scope of work in the RFP included language that the county would cover the insurance for the program. However, the county desires that the insurance responsibility should reside with the contractor. With this proposed renewal, the county clarified the insurance provision of this contract to require the vendor to maintain insurance for the ALF program. The vendor has agreed to meet the requirement with an increased cost of uh, the per trip rate. The proposed per rate trip would be $25. Community and Neighborhood Services is pleased with their current service and recommends continuing the Adams County Community Transit ALF program with Senior Resource Center for the 2015-16 contract. The recommendation is to approve the first renewal option to senior, Seniors Resource Center as a community trans transit provider for the ALEV program in the amount of $25 per trip and an amount to not to exceed the $612,000 per year. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have questions for staff? Commissioner Pulaski. Yes, um, this says for Adams County residents, so is that both within the city and also incorporated or how does that work? Um, I believe that it is all Adams County. All Adams residents. County? Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? Seeing no other questions, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment at this time? Seeing none, do we have a motion? The move to approve amendment one of the contract between Adams County and the Seniors uh, Resource Center for Community Transit, a lift for community and neighborhood services. Second. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, our third item is a resolution approving a non-binding letter of intent between Adams County and Snodgrass Investment LLC for property located at 330 Walnut Street at Bryant, Colorado. Sean Braden with our um, facilities department is here to talk through uh, what this LOA uh, it describes. Good morning. Um, in February 2006, the coroner's office vacated the property at 330 Walnut Street in Brighton and moved into their new facility located next to the detention center. And since that time, the facility has remained vacant. In September of 2014, Adams County instructed gu guidance corporate realty advisors to list the property for sale and solicit offers. On June 6th, 
or June 16th, Adams County received a letter of intent to purchase a property from Mr. Larry Snodgrass. The offer was countered and a tentative agreement was reached on June 29th with an updated letter of intent for a purchase price total of $515,000. The recommendation is to approve the letters of intent for the sale of 330 Walnut Street in Brighton and negotiation of the final sales agreement. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff? Commissioner Hansen. Um, I didn't see it in the documentation. What did the uh, property appraise for? The property originally appraised for 550, and it was originally listed at 570. Appraised at 550, listed at 570, and we ended up at 515. Um, yeah, after um, about six months, we lowered it to 545. It was the only offer okay. that we actually That's received. Fine. It's in the ballpark. Commissioners, any other questions? No other questions. I know this property has been uh, very hard to liquidate over the last year and a half, and I appreciate all the hard work and everything that you've done to get this done. So thank you very much. Uh, any comments? Would anyone in the audience like to make a comment on the subject at this time? Seeing none, commissioners, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would move for approval of a non-binding letter of intent between Adams County and Snodgrass Investments, LLC, for property located at 330 Walnut Street in the amount of $515,000. Do we have a second? Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Yes. Commissioner Odoracio? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes, thank you very much. Moving on, County Attorney Heidi Miller. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, to the extent that you decide it is necessary today, I would ask that you go into executive session uh, pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 246402, 4B and E, for the purpose of receiving legal advice and negotiation discussions regarding potential development at DIA. Do we have a motion? Is there a need? Well, I was going to be my question is, is there a need? I mean, we, we've, we, you put it on the agenda because we asked you to put it on the agenda. Um, but um, in this case, you know, we're, we're going to be reviewing and hopefully adopting the IGA next week. And so I'm not sure, is there any legal advice for you to give us? Not that I know of unless the commissioners have questions that there, I don't know. There's, there's an ACC meeting tomorrow, but I think primarily that's just to discuss the, the, uh, the ballot language specifically. And that's, we're going to get legal advice in that executive session <laughs> anyway. So is the question whether or not we have a motion to go into DIA? I, 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 I don't think we should. I don't think we should. Yeah, so I don't think we need it. Commissioner Odoricio? I'm thinking through it. I think a lot of the questions that, if there are any questions, will be addressed at the ACC meeting. Commissioner Pulaski? I don't have any. I don't think there's support for the motion. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Any other business? Seeing no other business, we will recess for five minutes and return with land use. <laughs> 